And, uh, you know, I, I, I assume the board members have received my response to the letter, and, and so I'll just have a brief statement and then answer questions. I imagine there are questions. Excuse me. Um, it's no secret that there were problems in the new campaign in 2011 or 2011. But I just, you know, there's an old saying about where there's smoke. Well, sometimes where there's smoke, there's smoke. And no fire. And I think what's important to remember is there has never been a suggestion, I shouldn't say the press suggests a lot of it, there's never been any testimony or anyone who has said the Lou campaign knew what I did, the Lou campaign, uh, I told the Lou campaign, somebody on the Lou campaign knew or was involved with me. Not one. And, and so what we have are well over 6,000 individual contributors. We have a campaign that doesn't accept even the $400. There may have been a few mistakes that they refunded, but the policy of the campaign is not even to accept $400 from people doing business with the city. Except nothing from people seeking, there's a list of people seeking to do business with the controller's office. No money accepted from anybody on that list, even though they're not on the doing business list of the CFP. You know, there are 35 contributions, all of which were refunded, where people said, there was evidence, let's put it this way, that they were reimbursed. There's the PAN. PAN was a community leader. I'll do a little fundraiser. He got involved with an FBI undercover. Um, he had this fundraiser. Apparently, he used the government's money to reimburse him. It was all refunded the minute PAN was arrested and the campaign heard about it. Then there were the people who, who testified at the trial. They were Chinese-American businessmen, immigrants, um, who all their testimony was most of the people they brought to the fundraiser paid with their own money, but uh, they were short on the commitment they made to the hosts, you know, for 10 people or whatever, so they reimbursed some people. That plus two people who said to Thatcher, these, of course, not under oath or anything, oh, yeah, I was reimbursed. Total 35 contributions out of, well, 6,500 contributions, of which over 5,000 are matchable. You know, Mr. Liu asked the campaign finance board years ago, can I have the contribution card in Chinese? He was told no for years. You know, in New York State, under federal law, all election materials, ballots, etc., the Board of Elections, have to be in Chinese for certain parts of the city. And Father, you probably know better than me, being an educator, but you know, I, I, I learned my French and Spanish and German in school. I can read French pretty well, speak it really poorly. I can read Spanish okay, can't speak it for a, a, worth anything. German, the same thing. When you learn a language by reading, you learn how to read it. When you're an immigrant who learns the English language on the streets of New York, you can speak to people. I don't think you're that have that facility for reading it if you've never studied in English or, or been schooled in English formally. So to not have the form that says, this is my own money, I'm not being reimbursed, in Chinese, and it's my understanding, recollection that at the end of 2011, the CFB finally approved a Chinese language contribution card. And all the problem contributions took place early in 2011 before and by the way, all from Chinese Americans, Chinese residents, before they even had the card. They were signing a card, who knows if they could read it. It was in English. That's not right. What we're talking about here is not John Liu. We're talking about the 5,000 people who contributed to his campaign and whether their contributions are as worthy of being matched as people from fancier parts of town. The report of the investigators, the CFB employed, is disgraceful for putting forth a whole chart about public housing income limits and rental limits and suggesting someone with an address in public housing couldn't contribute. The fact is, what the Thatcher Associates didn't know, and I guess your staff didn't know, is that once you're in public housing, it's your home. And if you're successful, you open a little business in Chinatown or somewhere, and now you start making money, you don't get kicked out of public housing. 
you just get charged surcharges. You just get charged more. So for them to even suggest, ah, oh, that person lives in public housing, how could they possibly afford the contribution, is frankly, frankly, probably a violation of federal law. Now, what the staff is proposing is the death penalty for minor transgressions. Totally eliminate from matching funds program. Over 35 contributions, about which I reiterate, no one knew. Now, somebody's going to question me and say, what about Ms. Howard, the treasurer? She was, unlike what the Thatcher report said, she was not convicted as charged. She was acquitted, not guilty, of the charge of engaging in a conspiracy to get matching, public matching funds uh, illegally, you know, fraudly, fraudulently. Not guilty on that count. She was convicted of two obstruction of justice charges which relate to how she responded to the investigation, not to how she raised money. And one charge that involves this 20, then 23-year-old young woman, first job out of college, in a late night, midnight chat. I didn't know what a chat was until it came up that old. But one of these electronic chats with a former boyfriend, and she says, oh, you know, we're close to the goal. Can I have your credit card number in case I need it? He gave her the number. She never used it. By the way, he lived in New Jersey. There was no, no effort whatsoever to get matching funds because the New Jersey residents, of course, contributions aren't matched. That's what really happened, aside from what you read in the press and so on. The campaign absolutely has refunded, and, and, and there are, and I won't, Obviously, we can't name them. We shouldn't name names here, people, you know, whatever. But if you look at the campaign's reports, there are lots of other contributions that were refunded. <clears throat> Some for more routine things. Oops, uh, the person's doing business, we don't take money from doing business. That kind of thing. There are some there where the campaign was uncomfortable with either the intermediary, well, the intermediary, and without anybody ever calling it the attention. Nothing you've ever read about, nothing the federal government investigators ever brought up, the campaign funded the numbers. Now, I would suggest that in responding uh, to the situation, that it would be appropriate for the board to take some action that's proportionate to what happened. 35 contributions versus the 6,000 sum. 35 versus the 5,000 plus that are matchable. The other thing I need to address is the fact that despite the rules, and I understand a newspaper was battling with the staff over oil about it, despite your rules, every other campaign received invalid matchings claims statements after each filing statement, as the rules provide, had an opportunity to correct them. In this case, at 4 o'clock, on July 19th, Friday afternoon, I received hand-delivered from the CFP 1,751 invalid matching claim statements spanning the last two and a half years. Blue campaign supposed to address those? Oh, a response due in eight business days. Now, some of the mistakes on there, 800 and some of them are cash contributors. These are the Asian Americans who gave $50 in cash. 25 in cash, 75, no more than 100. Why? They don't have checking accounts. Is this program about, oh, if you live on the east side or the west side and you have a checking account, boom, you fly through? Uh, but we're going to disallow all of the small contributors who do live in public housing, who do have jobs. And by, by the way, the other thing that Thatcher reports is, oh, some of these people's job titles show they couldn't afford it. That's insulting. They may have a spouse with a higher income. They may, my experience as a working class kid, lots of relatives who had two eight hour a day jobs. And another job, a third job on the weekend. The form, you put down one job. So you put down, you know, house cleaner or whatever. You, you don't, we don't know if these people, how they came up with their hundred bucks or, or $500. Um, so I, I see, a bit of economic prejudice there when you say, well, how could they afford this? 
We don't know enough about them based on one job title in there. We don't know if they got a spouse. We don't know if they got a uh, family support from a child who's a successful businessman or whatever. Um, so um, what I suggest is, I, you know, I, I understand the need of the board to make a statement, but I suggest that it ought to be proportional. I suggest that uh, perhaps some withholding of a percentage, 35 co contributors, $10,000 a contributor, withholding of matching funds. I think the campaign will consent to that, even if it's like not clear in the rules. But I think an essential thing, this is not a case like in past years where the candidate went around and did things. We, we've seen those cases over the years. Um, this is really a case about, oh, why were the 800, why are the 800 and some cash contributions rejected? Well, when the campaign started, it had a form, it had a box for check, money order, uh, credit card. None for cash, because Mr. Liu said to his staff, you know what, we, we don't want to take cash contributions. The other campaigns have had problems with that in the past. Frankly, after the, the newspaper story, the federal investigation became public, um, the Liu campaign fundraising was hurt seriously by that. They were hurt politically terribly by what Pan did and whatever. I mean, they were a victim of Pan's uh, crime, uh, as well as the attempt was on the public. The real damage was done here and now to the Liu campaign, politically and otherwise. So um, they said, well, we have you know, a lot of the seniors, a lot of people in Asian American communities, you know, want to help, they want to help John. So they started having fundraisers where people could give cash. And they used the form, and the contributor put in the $50 or $75 and wrote the word cash. When the treasurer inquired the staff, your staff, well, why are you rejecting 800 or something? The staff said, well, you don't have a box ch to check off, put a check mark by cash. Now, what is better evidence? The contributor writing the word cash or somebody with the right color pen checking a box? I ask you, that's a different that's a difference without any meaning. The fact is, the staff knew about this over two years ago, after statement two. But by withholding for two and a half years the uh, invalid matching claims reports, they led the campaign down the garden path. So now we have a hundred of them instead of forty that could have been corrected two years ago. Another objection that accounts for 500 rejections out of these 1,700 is a oh, wrong code. Well, that goes back to the first treasurer accidentally, uh, mistakenly putting in the wrong code for matching claims, certain category matching claims. If we had gotten the proper, the rules directed, like every other campaign got two and a half years ago, a matching claim statement could have not only corrected that, Oh, I'm making a mistake. For the next two years, put the right code in. Now, is that the campaign's fault? We asked, by the way, or I asked certainly in 2011, how come we're not getting these? Oh, oh, well, with the newspaper story investigation, we're not giving them to you. Well, now we're being penalized because we didn't address them. Um, I don't understand that. And it's not that we're being penalized. Those contributors. Those people who gave those little cash contributions, they're not going to be matched like the other folks are. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. President.